are obsessed with the Connie Fife Show. It's about a lifestyle shift to move up or out. Hey, you want your jam? What's the one thing that really drives you? What makes you unstoppable? It's about opening a new door to live your dream. People give up way too early on their dreams. It's about enjoying the journey. It's about keeping it real. Damn, now the interviewee is interviewing the interviewer. I like this. It's all about you. I knew there was something else I wanted to do. Stop taking shit so seriously. Y'all can do this. Take an outrageous look at life and laugh. This is the Connie Fife Show. We love your voice. We love your jam. You need to be on radio. And now your host, Connie Fife. Well, hello, everyone. It's Connie Fife, the Unstoppable Diva, and you're listening to the Connie Fife Show. Our loyal listeners, they come back over and over again. And I just want to thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing the Connie Fife Show and, and everything that you do for us, because we will continue to bring you the most, the most awesome guests to our show that are helping you build your lifestyle business. So for today, um, I have two ladies joining me today, and they're known as the ladies. And they are, how do I say this? I know them for a couple of years now, and they are just phenomenal. They're authors. Um, They are one of the 20 iconic authors, and that's according to the Every Writer's Resource. One half of the of the pair is Poet of the Year. We're going to get that into it a little bit more. They're also the founders of the Inspirational Woman in Literature, Media, and Journalism Awards. The magazine uh, they have is the 25 Hottest Authors and I Thought Literary Magazine. Now, they have read their books for fans from Australia, the UK, Greece, Canada, all by invitation for two regional poet laureates laureates, and at numerous UK Literary Book Awards. And they travel the world sharing their story, sharing the literature, sharing their poetry, and educating, entertaining, most entertaining ladies, and also inspiring other people to really put their story to paper and become those award winning authors and journalists. So please welcome to the show, well, Nona and Jade. Hi, and thank you for having us. I'm not sure if we're entertaining. No. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, no, let me tell you these. <laughs> First time I met you two, I was like rolling on the floor. I'm like, okay, either this is an act or this is the real thing. You're like, you know, a Laurel and Hardy episode of the way you, t- you guys go back and forth <laughs> with each other. I just love it. I think that she met me though, and I was on some really strong medication because I had bronchitis. So I'll blame it on the <laughs> medicine. Yeah, blame it on the meds. I'll blame it on the meds. Oh, yeah. I'm going to high five on that. Yes. One. High five. Wait, by the way, I feel very famous blaming on the meds. The next thing I'm going to do is blame it on exhaustion. Exactly. Exactly. And then that's official. Can you please like, check yourself? people know that it's well, let's, oh, let's blame, how about the flat let's not blame it on that flask of bourbon <laughs> <laughs> never never the bourbon never never the never. Is never the problem okay so jade you have an award for your poetry so let's share that award i want everybody to see it that is like the weirdest best thing ever right it's like here we go it's from the industry uh, Ill. I can't even speak today. The Indie Author Legacy Awards, the ILA Award, Poet of the Year. It was like a really big shot because Winona's poetry is so much better than mine. And I was like, Winona should have won this. <laughs> and I said so in my speech. But then I, I was like, but thank you guys anyway, because I think I told you, which is exciting. That is just, I, I mean, such an honor. I mean, I mean, you should be, you should be proud of that. You should be screaming it from the rooftop that you got that because it's not a short feat to get there. But it and was I, a short feat to get her picture taken. Oh yeah, it was really funny. <laughs> so I'm really short for anyone that doesn't know me. I'm four ten and a half, and I wore like an eight and a half heel, and the photographer couldn't find me, and I told him, "Dude, you gotta look down." <laughs> so I could get me on the way up. Because he was like, is she not here? I'm like walking, looking at her. I'm like, dude, you got to look down. And of course, he didn't adjust the mic. So I was like, oh, I'm just for the jump to give me some. <laughs> that's, that's cool, too, because I understand that everyone is the shortest. <laughs> okay, so you reckon she said, dude, you have to look down. That means she was so close 
to the <laughs> photographer. photographer that she could talk to him before he, she even even noticed that she, where she was. Because I didn't want him to be embarrassed. He got paid for all this thing. I don't right? want the person to be like, what you mean? You didn't look down. So I was like, I'm trying to whisper. To <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Nona, you also have an award this year as well. And Thank let's you bra- for including the narcissist. Well, let's brag. Let's brag on your award too. It wasn't this year. But it wasn't this year. But it been- was three years ago. Yeah. Hey, I got- and, hey, hey, lady, it still counts. <laughs> yeah, it still counts, no matter how long that was. You, st- I know you still worked hard for it. I have a some courageous survivor award. So I have an advocacy award for my writing um, because the and I thought divorce was bad dealt with emotional abuse. And the effects of emotional abuse. And since we started that campaign, and that's actually one of the reasons we had started the group originally, was to give that a voice and to push a little harder. Mm, Um, Obviously, the uh, the group evolved. (laughs) (laughs) How many how many books do you have? How many books do you have now between the two of you? Like nine, nine. And I thought we have thirteen total. Yeah, it's Uh, between the two of us. Well. That we've written in together, and then we have, I have seven by myself. Wow. You guys, you guys are just, just incredible. And I know some, some of your backstory, and again, for, for our listeners, I mean, you just didn't wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to write a book. Um, I mean, you really had to go through, do some, do some rough patches to get to where, to get to where you were. I mean, yeah. people are still going through rough patches, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I'm that's waiting. life. But that's life. I'm waiting for the, the to the pave the road to success because it keeps me in a dirt road. <laughs> it's like, oh, they put gravel down, fresh gravel. Yeah, oh, they forgot that <laughs> All right, all right, Jen. All right. There's a pothole. There, there's a pothole there. <laughs> well, I mean, we we. But we all we all get those disappointments in life. But you ladies have stuck to it. I mean, over and over. Again, I, I, I guess that the biggest thing and the one thing that I always I always look at that that we really cannot live a brave life without disappointing people that are in our life. But you guys, you've really took those stories and you've taken that and you've created a career out of sharing out of and you thought divorce was bad out of helping other people and educating other people on so many different aspects of life. We like to call that our life lesson. And um, I think we're still learning them. So of course we are, because I mean, you learn as you live. Exactly. So <laughs> we are always writing something new because that uh, we learn something new. And mm-hmm. uh, recently those difficulties have been a lot of what we've been writing about. <laughs> um, <laughs> because you know, as anybody out here, if you do something to an author or you say something funny, Know that it might end up in a book. Just know, that. <laughs> know what you what you say can be held accountable, like in the court of law, which would be the book. <laughs> and just well, that's what life. That's author. what life is. Life, life is <laughs> life is a story. I had someone, one of our talent from the agency, say to me the other day, he "Goes, you just have so many stories." I said, "It's life," and all I, you know, I'm just talking about what has happened to us in our life. And authors and speakers, that becomes their material. Your best material is what happens around you in life. I mean, you can walk just in one day's time. You can, you can come back and you can have five, six stories to write about. Just by something that just happens. Something that just happens over a lunchtime. Just, you know, just sitting and watching people. It's really incredible. And, and you guys are incredible because you, you know, you, you have that skill and that talent then to put it to paper. Well, we thank you for that. I don't think we call it incredible. I think we call it therapy, but I I'll know. take incredible. <laughs> I want to get me out of your mouth. Thank you, incredible. A, I think oh, I'm going to be a little. I'm going to be a little mean today. Don't be mean. Don't <laughs> be mean. We can't be mean today. We can oh. be okay. Ah, oh, go for it. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for saying it's incredible because I was just recent last year. I was trying to finish up my uh, creative writing degree, and I learned that I was pop poetry. Not real poetry. <laughs> so now, <laughs> so now we take that, we take that as, and we say it. We're like, we are, we're not regular poets. We are pop poets. So we write things that are popular, or things that like poetry that you can read and be like, oh, I get the point. Not like, oh, I'm still five days later trying to figure out what it talks about. 
So we write pop poetry. So we, we okay. just made it into our book. Yeah. See how life okay. seems too wonderful then? Yeah. I didn't I didn't know there was such a category, but I guess it is now. <laughs> we made it up. <laughs> right. Yeah. It is now. It is now. It so is let's now. so let's talk really quick though about, about the business, the business of, of writing. And you talk about you know, what's a good pitch? What's uh, the importance of publicity? Uh, letting your message shine through. And you teach this in your, in your school, in your um, program that you have for writers that you do have coming up in Vegas pretty soon. Wow, I love how she did the segue. I know the beautiful Thank segue. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead and talk about it, woman. Oh, yeah, so we have a writer's retreat October 7th and 8th in Las Vegas at the Embassy Suite Convention Center. And Anyone listening to this gets 20% off the price. Yay. Yay. Um, <laughs> Yay, we need those hands um, clapping. Woo. <laughs> Yay, death, death clap. Death, death clap. clap. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we, one of the things that we do talk about is how to get publicity. And yes, I, we try, when we come on your show, we try to be professional and not just humor and comedy. So we wrote little thingies. So yes, yes. We wrote, oh, wait. because... Okay. As authors, and sometimes even as business people, we are behind the scenes so much. Like, we have other people to do things that we don't know how to present ourselves well. Mm. So, first of all, I, I guess I'm taking pitch today, right? Yes. We're ta- I'm taking pitch. Yay. Okay. So, 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 share a good pitch. If you're an author out there and you have a book, please remember three things. And no, this is not on the nice little card so you can write it down or anything. Uh, But the first thing that you need to remember is that your book is wonderful to you. Yes. And it is wonderful to your readers. Yes. But if you want it to go to like Good Morning America, you have to make it social. You have to make that connection between what you write and why it's important to society. Because writing a fiction book about romance and love, but wonderful. But why is it important to society? So let's say mm. Valentine is around and you're a romance writer. Well, the difference between reality and what's in romance books, if you can find two or three things, there's a good pitch for you. Mm. Also remember mm. that you definitely want to go with the list. The list helps a lot. But what do you mean, what do you mean by the list? I'm about to, I'm about to give you one. <laughs> like okay. What is it? The <laughs> Or, you know, three point is to not be, to get your head out of the book and to find the real man of your life, of the real man of love of your life. Mm-hmm. That sort of, those top three, that's great. And then try to just connect them to your book, like different chapters in your book. And then that way you can give the example from your book and the example in real life of where it would apply. Also, those people tend to have family issues in their book that they have to get over. If it's your family, feel free to share that story if they don't mind. Just how I got over family issues to do to uh, fall in love, or how I got over family issues and started a business, that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. it also gives you a, an opportunity to do Christmas as well, because <laughs> you know you have <laughs> issues at giving and Christmas. Yeah, um, yes. Get carbs and eat the dinner. These Ooh. are also topics. Yes, how to sit, how to sit with your family, right, and enjoy dinner. So, how long, how long should a pitch be, and how, and what's the best way to do the pitch? Okay, give us an example of the pitch you used for the and I thought the voice was bad. Really, give me the example. I don't think that's my best pitch work. Okay. Anyway, okay. we we, we wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> If you're an author out there, you know what a query letter is. It is the bane of your existence, or if you happen to be traditionally published, it's the love that you, lo- the love of your life that you have like copies of and around your house. Um, <laughs> look at this query letter; they are accepted. Right. Either way, you know what a query letter is, and you know that the first line of a query letter is important to make the person interested. So what I did was I took a piece of the book, and I thought divorce was bad. There was a poem in there. Why did everything just fall out of, of my course, head? Of course. Yeah. When a man beats you. Yeah. Head. So there was a poem in there. And it was about a child that got abused and she looked back. But the opening statement was, when a man beats you with his words, you have to leave. And that was the most interesting thing because you get, you feel mm-hmm. like the physical violence is happening, but you right. know she said it. So it's like, oh, okay. 
And that's exactly what I used. And I used it during October, which was domestic violence month. But also she mm. put it at the top. Like, so it was a trying to, the it was a subject, subject was just subject the line. And then of course you see that first little line as you're looking at an email and then you, well, you figure out if you're about to open, you're about to open it or not. So right. Put, when a man beats you with his words as the first opening line. And then wow. the subject line had, you know, an internationally interviewed authors speak about domestic abu- abuse or mm. the top five ways to see if your relationship's healthy. Okay. And then that opening line was when a man beats you with his words. And then one of our accomplishments came right after that. So she called that little line, that little preview. Right. That's a hope. She's like, that's the mm. first, you can hook them. And we are authors and we are business people. And we are passionate about what we do. Right. You can hook them with the one line. Yeah. Have a more of, a, of them opening that email. Because yeah. they just want to know, what do you mean when a man beat you with his words? Yeah. Like, right. Right. Like, I want the closet. That intrigue. So yeah, it's that hook. It's like, go fishing, you hook them and you reel them in. <laughs> Uh, and that's exact and that's exactly what what it what it is and that's an example so then what is the importance of publicity to go with that jay do you want to say the importance of publicity i know you didn't prepare for that okay sure i mean she just she was was like, oh, let me catch it let me catch it i got it i got it she was supposed to be the other half of the pitch <laughs> <laughs> here we go all right well do you want did, did you have something more to add to the pitch no no we're absolutely fine i i, I court I caught the other part. We're good. Okay. So the important publicity is that when I say soda, you think Coke, Sprite, your favorite, Pepsi, I don't know, your favorite soda. Or you think, oh, I hate soda so often for me, I drink tea. Mm -hmm. But you have a strong opinion. You're thinking of a product. So if you have a business, but no one's ever heard of you, it's not going to go anywhere. If you have a book and no one's ever heard of you, you have the best book in the world, but no one's ever heard of you not going to go anywhere. So Mm. publicity is important, but what's more important is selling yourself because people buy brands. And if you are human and you connect with your people, guess what happened? They want to buy you. They were like, Mm. Hey, that person was funny. Let me click on and see what they have. In fact, I have sometimes stories of people come up to our table and say, you sell, you do books. What? I don't even read, but I'll, I'll just buy a couple off you because you guys are funny. Sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your money. I'll sign it. I'll never read it. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> funny because that story happened to us in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. So they walk up and they were like, oh, I never knew you guys wrote books. I listen to your podcast. I I'm watch like, you on YouTube. I so I wanted you. to ask. But you know, it's rude to ask your fans embarrassing questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Go ask away. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the list is that we say at the beginning of every show? Do you think mm. we just like to like say, and I thought, and then add words? I guess the people look at one gag. They were like, this is the one gag. Okay, well, I guess we whatever. just didn't get it. <laughs> So I so let me, so let me ask you. I heard something yesterday. Well, the one thing that I always share when I'm doing training is that you need to get to the end of your story in three minutes, or else I mean the people are just comatose in your audience. I read something yesterday. Well, the three minutes is now fifteen seconds. Yes. Yes. Do you see oh, that? So oh, right. Oh, so that's the other so side true. of my card. Okay. And so, so what is your, what is your, ta- what is your thought? What is your take on that? So originally, oh, wait, I guess, do you want to talk? I, Cause oh, I took your pitch. I know. So can I, can I have this? Yes. Okay. So it's timing, right? <laughs> so <laughs> when you introduce yourself and people say, well, tell me something about you. Well, I'm Jade. I write part of the And I Thought series and I'm a pop poet. What's pop poet? Mm. Oh, well, now you're engaged in my 15 seconds has now become three minutes. That's it. Yes. Yep. Now, if you happen to get one of those pitch letters and, and someone says, yes, I, I want to remind you that timing is also important mm. uh, when it comes to being on live television. Yes. Radio. Podcast, it's important, but sometimes not as important. But this mm-hmm. one is very Oh, important. I'm going to get to it next. 
Oh yes, yes. Okay. Well, we so that's one. very, very important. I was but, but you're story. but you're right on the time, and even when you are, I mean, more more so on live on live television or even live podcasts, because I used to do mine live, and you'd have to get in, get those sound bites, and get out. And and again, that's that that fifteen second pitch, and if people don't get what you're saying. In 15 seconds, the rule of thumb is really, if someone asks you, what do you do? You seven words or less. And that gives you that 15 to 30 second mark. But seven words or less, you need to say what you're doing with such excitement that they're going to be like, tell me more about that. And and unfortunately, a lot of... Was unfortunately a lot of people go into, oh, and I write books, and let me tell you about my book, and oh, let me say, let me read chapter no. one to you. Yeah, <laughs> no. no, no one cares that long. I'm sorry to say it like that, but no one cares that long. They, they, they want you to tell you, tell me, because just like you would want someone to tell you, like, could you hurry up because I have stuff. Mm-hmm. And if I mm-hmm. and if I say it concisely enough and then kick you, then you're like, okay, well, you know what? I can invest three four more minutes in this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Four exactly. Minutes becomes a, it becomes a conversation. Now, if you want to perfect this art, we perfected this art in the bar. Yes. In so, a bar, of course. In, in a, a bar. bar. Hey, the bourbon girls perfected this art in the bar. <laughs> oh, <laughs> imagine. We were in a bar, but no, actually, we, we just go there and uh, so, like, talk to people. Yeah, we go there and we talk to people. Like, So if we were behind on like a book or something, we would go there and we talk to people. You know, mm-hmm. you, you get an interesting conversation. You learn new things. You write a chapter. Um, but anyway, no. The point was, one of our friends was, uh, one of our co-authors is a bartender. And she's like, do you know those things? I've seen the best deals happen in hotel bars. Yep. So we went to our favorite hotel bar and we started chatting with people. And we learned that in 15 seconds, they listen. And then three or four minutes is the beginning of a conversation. And that conversation normally turns into a book sale. So yeah. if you're there for like three or four hours, I we could sell five or six books. Yeah, and we're not even like, really trying. And we're not trying. I mean, and, if we right. were hustling. We could probably sell more, but I mean, we really were. I mean, you're drinking, you're chilling, you're having fun. Right. People are like, what is it again? Let me just pull it up. On, no, you pull it up on Amazon. All right, let me just buy it now. Exactly. Well, you know what? The other thing is too, because because of technology. It's people. You know, they're like, "Who are you?" Oh, okay. They like you said, they can look it up right now. Oh, okay. Thanks. Nice chatting with you, and they can move on. But they have to find you you the person interesting enough to stay in the conversation with you again or else they're they're moving on they're moving on to the next thing because people and 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 it's sales 101 and i you know call me old fashioned but i still say that sales 101 is where you need to be and that's having those personal conversations with somebody so which takes a lovely to our next one. Oh, <laughs> now you know people are going to think that we rehearsed this, but we really did. No, <laughs> we, didn't, we, didn't. we did we not did rehearse that this. We <laughs> if we rehearsed that, that would be like one of the first things. That would be first. That would be your first one. I would be giving all of us high five. Yeah, be like <laughs> way for us to be professional. Yes. I mean, yeah, yeah. I took her half of the pitch section. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Jade. Well, we still okay. give you the wave. <laughs> so, yeah, we should be conversational. And that's important if you're in a regular interview after you got that pitch letter and they're like, yay, you can come. To remember that you're not a talking head that's memorized everything. If someone right. asks you a question and that person's laughing, don't be like, oh, yes, haha. <laughs> okay. And my next point is no. no that's just too eager. The audience feels that they they feel stressed. Yeah, they they, like, they, they see natural. they see that scripted robotic. I'm here, or this is what I got to say. I got to go. Yeah, they see that. People clearly see that. Mm. Exactly. So be conversational, and like we're trying to be right now. Except I'm being a bit robotic. If you could just pass me that flask, <laughs> can't do it. Can't do it. We're live. Can't do it. Can't, can't do, do it. it. I could be a little bit more can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, well, besides the bourbon, what 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 are some other exercises people could do to prepare for these interviews without sounding robotic? Well, as we said, take yourself. Well, I don't know, depending on who you are, you take yourself to a place where you're forced to talk to people, mm-hmm. and be that person that says hello well. to it, and talk to people because you need to be comfortable talking to strangers. Right. Right. 
You have okay. to be because so is the bar is the bar the pl- best place to do it without somebody trying to think you're picking them up bar, or <laughs> coffee, <laughs> coffee shop, coffee. the mall, any yeah, any, any events, the library, events, any public place, right? Okay. That that coffee shop in the Barnes and Noble, whatever. You know, right? get used to talking to strangers. And I know mm-hmm. that sounds weird, and you can mind your own business and all this stuff, mm-hmm. but you need to because you only have so many friends and family that are gonna buy your product. <laughs> the rest of it needs to come from people you don't know who who will read the book <laughs> who will read the book or will buy your product and another good place to actually talk to people that you don't know is the grocery store because you go there every week you probably yeah. see the same people again and again like the cash right mm-hmm. person or the person that's putting away the food or whoever you see the same people again and again and again and again right so if you see those people Talk to them. Hey, how are you today? Oh, yeah. You know, share a story, whatever. You know, people want to talk. And then do. next week, talk, uh, talk to them again. And you're mm-hmm. getting comfortable, but you're also building relationships for people right. that may want to buy your book. Like, I've been in so many grocery lines where people have been like, oh, how's that book thing going? Your book was good. And people behind me are like, what book? She wrote a who? What can I right. card? Can I, can I read this book? Mm-hmm. What's going on with this book? Or you're just giving a conference? What conference? Where is it? I don't know. What do you think about this? What? Grocery stores, post office, if you're mailing stuff, talk to those yeah. people. You post know, I know it too. takes less time to do the self-service thing. I mm-hmm. get that. But make it a goal to go and talk to people. Mm-hmm. You know, take, get some cash, walk on into the gas station. Right. Yeah. Instead of so using plastic. <laughs> but yeah. they get some cash out. They help you, apparently, they help you save money because instead of using plastic, <laughs> you get a credit card. It's really helping. It's really helping. <laughs> But then also, it helps you build your conversational skills, especially if you're an introvert or if you're one of those people who like kind of like stuck their head in the sand and just did their business and then they right. back up and they're like, hey, what's going on with the world? It's a great Right, thing. right. Yeah. And, it's, and especially people like that, thought leaders, you know, they're, they're focused on their material, their content, and they're not looking at everything else what's going on around them, which is, which is a good point that you really do need to do that and get, and like really get, get out of your own, get out of your own way and get out and experience other things, which also will allow you to have more content for writing. That Absolutely, well. and, yeah. and know that those people, like the post office, and the yeah. they're not going to be mean because they get paid not to be. They get paid to be nice to you. <laughs> yeah, they get paid to be nice to you, so you can practice your conversational skills, right? Yeah. Not, and then you know what's fun is that they, they always ask you different questions, and sometimes you get questions you never thought of. And you're like, huh, which is great because, you know, when an interviewer asks you some question that you never thought of, right. you can then answer it and you can do it concisely. Well, let's take a, let's take a really quick break. Let's take a really quick break. And when we come back, let's talk about speaking concisely. Well, hang in there. You're listening to the Connie Fife Show. We'll be right back. <laughs> The Connie Five Show is heard everywhere. You can find the Connie Five Show on most of your favorite networks. It's time to now recognize and thank our major networks for all of their support. In the house, we have Conscious Business Radio, C Suite Radio, Transformation Radio, iHeart Radio. We are also heard on Google Play. Apple, Radio, Stitcher, and so many more that I just can't keep up with them all. I'm Connie Pipe, your unstoppable diva. We'll learn more about our gym and how we can work together at my fancy swanky website, ConniePipeShow.com. I'll see you over there. Until then, like, 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 share, share, share. Now back to the show. And we're back, and I'm Connie, and I am the Unstoppable Diva with the Connie Five Show, and today we have with us our Unstoppable guest, Winona and Jade, best known as the Literary Ladies. So, when before we went to break, ladies, you were talking about how to speak concisely. So, who's yes. up on that? We have so, concisely, concise. and there's two arrows concise. that point against each other to remind you to shrink stuff. Shrink it. <laughs> So and another good thing when I was talking about the grocery people, well, the, you're only going to talk to them as long as they're scanning your groceries now. 
But that's so, as long as they're paid to be nice. So, right. so, so you learn how to say and do things in a very short time. And yeah. it'll help you. And also being concise will help you with time. Yes, with time. Hold on, like I have a time card. Hold on. Fail. Yes, we're going back. <laughs> that's the case. You know, we want you to know they all loop it's, back. It's full it's circle. It's like a very bad highway. <laughs> well, it back to the yeah, it comes back full circle on that highway. Let's see, that Los Angeles highway. Oh, my God. I was on it last oh. week. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> yes. I, I tried to avoid. I really tried to avoid it. Yeah, or get a driver. But I, yes. I was driving myself last week without a passenger. I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm sorry. Not even an HOV lane. I'm Not sorry. Not even the HOV lane. Track. Uh, and I thought I heard, I hated DMV traffic. No, I went to LA and was excited for Northern Virginia traffic. I was like, uh, this is the traffic I'm talking about, people. Oh my, oh my, oh my God. There was a, there was a picture on Facebook the other day of the traffic at a point where probably a helicopter, you could see all white lights and you could see all the red lights. And it was just like bumper to bumper to bumper. And I'm like, I live in that. <laughs> Yes, yes that's, that's my that's my world. But um, so talk question? about being concise. Yes, absolutely. Oh, no, let's go back. Mm-mm. The odd question is, how do you feel about doing that <laughs> yeah. and, and knowing that the earth moves? No, that, that was me not the, the odd time. question. My odd okay. question was, do you ever drink before you get on the highway? Like not alcohol, but like water or anything in the car? <laughs> you just don't know. How long is well, let me. No, serious. Let me answer that question. No. Because, right. because you're going to be peeing your pants. <laughs> yes. I a mistake. Yes, I've done that. I, I'm like, okay, I could get my Starbucks tea. I can get on the road. For, you know, our drive to go 10 minutes will be good. Then all of a sudden, it's like, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> What's my di- I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I've done that. I've done that. We so did our first I had, LA tour. I had coffee, like, because I'm like, I need like 17 cups of coffee a day. So I had my coffee yeah. in the car, like, okay, it's only going to take like an yeah. hour or whatever. Two and a half hours later, yeah. I was like, wow, I really have to go to the bathroom. And I'm so glad I made us leave so early. <laughs> and, you're, and you don't want to get off the highway because if you get off, because you know it's going to be. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Then, then you gotta get back on. It's like, no, I just want to get to my destination. I just want to get there. I was going last last winter, and it never snows in LA. We we all know that, right? So I'm I'm going to them. So with the, I was going to LAX. So from where, where I live to get to LAX, it's about forty miles. So you can think four hours. And so I get in the car. I don't drink my drink or or anything. I get so far. And there were snow flurries, literally snow flurry. There were. So I'm like at the top of the 10 and I could see the snow flurry happen. And I'm like, oh my God, where am I? Like, okay, we have global warming. It's snowing in Los Angeles. It snowed, but just little flakes, but it caused a pile up of traffic. You guys are like, Carmageddon. Because people aren't used to it. And I'm from the Northeast. And, and I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? You people don't know how to drive. And I, So now I'm sitting and I'm sitting and sitting. And then now I'm like, okay, I got to go to the bathroom. Yep. 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 That's the way. Wait, 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 wait. But you see, did better than we did because we were here and we, at that time we we're had in a mid Atlantic and we yeah. don't know how to drive. So we had a president that was from Chicago. Okay, and he was like, "It's only a couple inches of snow. What are you guys Why talking you about? School? Why are you counting in school? Okay, yeah. Do you know the president of the United States got stuck in traffic and couldn't get helicopter out <laughs> because it was because, Carmageddon? Because Carmageddon happened. It yeah. was three inches of snow. That was all that fell." And okay. people had to abandon their cars on the side of the road and walk five and six hours home. <laughs> the NBA stopped running the bus and at like a certain time told everyone to get off and walk. <laughs> but this, <laughs> this wasn't even sticking to the ground. It was just like, oh, and I'm just like, oh, what? God. And there was accidents oh. and people, and it was like, what? So I finally got off and I went back home. Mm-hmm. And the yeah, person, absolutely. I mean, the person I was I meeting, 
Yeah, I was going to see them speak, and this other person I was meeting, I texted her. I'm like, "Sorry, I went back home." <laughs> was yeah, like, no, I mean, absolutely. Like when it's gonna snow here, like two inches. Yeah, I just tell them I can't make it. They're like, "What?" I'm like, "Oh, I can't make it. It's gonna snow. My car does not leave my driveway <laughs> because I have no time for any accidents. I have no time for dumb people that want to drive 85 in the snow. No, thank you. <laughs> I'll stay home." But that, it's funny because that would that, that would be me. That would be me. <laughs> but I, I I have I have a four wheel drive SUV, so that would be. But people from Pennsylvania can. People from Maryland cannot, unless they're from Western Maryland, they cannot do it, and they play around like they can. You can't. You're from the middle of Maryland, like I'm from the middle of Maryland. Go ahead and and accept your limitations. Yeah, they do have. Yeah, they, they do have people like me. Out of the way, I'm from Pennsylvania. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. You guys can do it, Pennsylvania. Man, I have seats, and I mean, yeah, and in Northeast, Northeast as well. I mean, my, I don't, I I can't tell you how many times I threw my SUV in four wheel drive and picked people up and said, "Come on, let's go. You're going to work." Absolutely, like it's this. Oh wait, you're the mean lady. Oh, I. I, uh, Oh my goodness, that's me. (laughs) There's no reason you can't make it to work. Get in. Oh, no. See, this is why I work for myself, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I work for myself. Because I'll be like, look, I'm not coming to meet you, but let's do this teleconference. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> we're being really, Jade, we're being really unprofessional. Oh. Oh, are we? Sorry. No, I was oh. joking. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, well, ladies, 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 ladies we do. That's oh, okay. We do need to, we do need to get going. You know, I love, I love you chatting with you guys. Humor. So... Okay, did you cover all the EQ cards? Um, we have one talking left, points. which was supposed to be the start, but you know, we went from pitches on up. Please remember your talking points. That's very important. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten up there and I was enjoying myself so much that I forgot my talking points. That would be um, last time. No, that would be right seven now. days ago. Seven right days now. ago. Yeah. <laughs> we got on the whole thing, a show, we did an entire hour interview, and I went, Did we remember our talking points? And we went, No. Nah. We forgot what we to talk about. I'm going to tell you something, though. I am going to tell you right now. Again, you just talked about it. I mean, you know your talking points, but don't go in there robotic and have the conversation. Have fun. Just have fun with the conversation with your audience. And that's exactly what you do. And that's why you two are so successful, because you have fun with it. You're not so serious when you, when you go in there. But we do need to move on. I'm going to put you in the hot seat right now. Yay, hot seat. This, let me get some water. So, get so, the hot seat. I won't be quiet. Get the hot seat. So what is what has been one of your toughest, toughest falls? Oh. I've been asking that immediately. There has been a lot of tough falls. There's you mean it lot. hasn't been an overnight success? Uh, I guess you could kind of say it has. So it's only been work- three <laughs> Um, Working four-hour days. Yeah, no, sure. No. So that's exactly what I so, was. <laughs> so I think one of them was when we write with a group of ladies and they told us that things aren't happening as quickly as they would like, which we mm. can understand because things take time. And right. Uh-huh. Not everybody knows that things take time. We don't even around for eight weeks. Right. And it wasn't really happening for them as quickly. You know, we weren't selling like mm. the books. We were not like the top selling list of anything. Right. And one by one, they decided, I'm not really going to be in this. Like, you hate my poetry. You can do all this stuff. But I need to focus on my family. I need to focus on myself. I need to, well, I, I, we understand. We understand. And Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it was still heartbreaking. Like, everyone... Because we were like, we're getting there, you guys. Can't you see it? And then it was like, no, I mean, it's going to take a really long time. And so that that was a... Yeah, some people can't, can't see it. I do want to elaborate on that with you because, I mean, we have people that come into the agency and we coach them, we mentor them, we book them, and that takes a while. And, and then they're expecting to be just like booked overnight. You know, they're an expert. They know what they're doing. Why am I not getting booked? It, it, it just doesn't. It, it you you need to build that foundation you need to build that longevity you you just you just have to i mean i my 
my first coach that I had, um, he just broke it out for me. He goes, the first three years, he goes, all you're doing is building your, your foundation. And of course, people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear yes. that. They want, I got to be an overnight success. I got to work two hours a day and I'm not going to do anything else but lay on the beach. It just doesn't happen that way. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's because both of us came from an entrepreneurial background, like our parents right. told us this. So we know things don't happen like overnight. So we right. were in this, like, hey, this is gonna take like three, four, five years, but yeah. we'll get there. Right. And also, another one of those really hard things was death. People that we know would die. My mother died a mm. week before our first LA tour. Yeah. Our was, first real like televised thing. Right. It was literally seven days beforehand. She died before we got on the uh, before we got on the plane, which was weird because my mother is the fashionista. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> we think about it all the time. We were like, huh? You're she like, wouldn't let us get away with it. She wouldn't let what us do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, and um, it's just been lots of death, like. Mm. Ago, my cousin died in a car accident. It's just been oh, lots mm. of yeah, twenty yeah, years old. and it's just been a lot. That's a lot to deal with. It's a lot. Yeah. of it's a lot of getting yourself over your own grief, you right? To do this and have the energy to do it. I mean, I think that we encourage each other. Like we want to just put all up in a corner and cry. yeah, we say we cannot do this because we have something to do. Right, so we get back. True. Exactly. I was like, true, true. Mm. All right. <laughs> it was, it was- well, and it's good that, and it's good that you have each other to keep that, you know, to keep that perspective. Uh, I mean, there's been times over the last 12 years that I've been doing this again. Yeah. I just wanted to crawl in the corner and say, okay, I'm not doing this right. I, and something's wrong. And, but it's, you know, it takes somebody else to really pull you out of it. In my case, it's my husband who says, get your ass up and do it. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We, we say things like that all the time. We're yeah. doing it because we have to do it. And we're people of our word. And we're like, right. okay. We're right. People of our word. Let's go. Right. Made a promise. We got to do this. We're going to do this. We, we, we made mistakes. We, we figure out from our mistakes. We learn from our mistakes. But the greatest thing is that, you know what? People that don't make mistakes, you know, you could be sitting in that place or you could be sitting in a place that really fulfills your life. And True. those well, people don't yeah. make mistakes, don't have the, I don't have stories to tell like this. They don't, <laughs> they, they, don't, don't. They, don't, they don't, they don't have this ahead. Colonel Sanders was what? 69. And he filed bankruptcy and he tried how many restaurants? Like I was thinking it was 102. I just saw the documentary. It was like 102 times he tried before somebody finally said, okay, we'll give you a chicken to try. I, and he was almost 70. So. Hey, wow. yeah. And yeah. I think I'm old. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, I'm too old to be doing this. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know by that point, you're like, just bury me. Uh, I just want to, I just want to sit back. That's when you really want those couple hours. Okay. So, and, and that's the other thing too. Like I fall, I see a lot of people fall into that shame or that, that negative speak. And like you ladies, again, it's just having that, having that support team, having, having that cabinet of truth tellers around you. That that really do lift you. That really do lift you up. So now, where are you going from here? Tell us more about your program you have coming up in Vegas. Absolutely, well, Nona. Yeah, I get to talk. I'm not Woo! To. Um, so the experienced writers <laughs> retreat is two days long, and we like to call it the experienced writers retreat for one reason because it's in Vegas. You get to experience a lot, and those days that you're there and what but happens they, in vegas stays in vegas <laughs> <laughs> unless you write about it and then it didn't stay yeah make put, the, put fake names in it you're good to go yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's from 3 to 7 p.m because we already know everyone has partied and they have a hangover so why bother waking <laughs> anybody up in the morning that's rude um, wow well, we, 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 we need meeting anything. planners like you <laughs> oh they don't have a hangover and they're just tired because i mean it's Vegas. Do all the things. Exactly. Okay. But, uh, 3 PM on our, on our, sorry. 3 p.m. on our first day, we're going okay. to do talking and getting to know the people that are there. We're going to talk about how to turn a book into a script. We're going to talk about how to put more poet, poetic 
words into your like memoirs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's writing stuff. Uh, business wise, we're going to talk about marketing and branding and how to present yourself on an interview. Go figure. Uh, one of the most interviewed authors in the world is going to talk about how to get interviewed and how to present yourself on said interview. I don't think making funny faces is one of those things that we're going to say. <laughs> we might. Although we just we said. Might. Um, <laughs> let your personality show. <laughs> exactly. And then the second day, we will actually put into practice what we have discussed. We will have Boozy. I, I keep saying his name wrong, so he's going to kill me. So I just normally call him Boozy, Boozy W. He's going to do mock interviews and he's going to talk to you about timing and he's going to give you like a critique so you can be better suited for podcast and radio. And then you okay. actually have an opportunity to have a live interview at the end of the day with us. Yay. Because we have our own podcast, blah, 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 blah. Let me check it out. Wait, wait, no, it's we don't have a podcast anymore. We have our own like blog and Roku TV. And it's it's just stuff. crazy. Okay. Um, and then uh, we have Pitch Fest, <laughs> which nice. is the last two hours. So from five to seven is Pitch Fest. And okay. my favorite thing of every writer's retreat mm -hmm. is Hollywood comes to Vegas. Yay, and we get to talk to them. So we had the working director, the pr uh, production person. She owned, she was with half of a production company. She has half production company. And then we have an actor and an actress. So you can nice. walk in the room and you can pitch them your book to movie idea right and if you successfully do it well you may end up with all three things signed which is a person who will direct the movie a person who will shoot the movie and a person who will act in the movie wow. now the person who directs the movie is really good at finding financing so hey who knows that movie may actually happen. that's right who knows where you go from there or exactly. if not if they don't pick it up at least you'll walk away with some really helpful advice mm -hmm. you'll have constructive criticism which will help right. you to tighten up for the next time that you are mm -hmm. in a position to pitch or if you're just going out there cold calling people. who knows right. who knows what you're doing you know but if you do come then you'll have the maybe you'll have the movie or maybe you'll just have some really good pointers so also during that pitch fest we're not just focused on hollywood we will have two publishers one hybrid one traditional and we will have the magazine editor for guests for the 25 hottest, which is not us. We are the founders. Yes. Not us. <laughs> we are not the yes. other one. So we will have that and the <laughs> editor for the And I Thought the Literary Magazine. So you can either try to submit your work for the literary magazine or you can try to get yourself either as a writer for the 25 mm -hmm. hottest or in the 25 hottest magazine. Either or. Very nice. Try. Very nice. Super, super nice. Well, ladies, I want to thank you for being here. I, I just... It is so fun to talk to. I, uh, you're always welcome back. Anytime, anytime, you are always welcome back here. But thanks for being here. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Well, that's all we have for today. And thank you for being here and listening and learning more about Wilnona and Jade and the Thought Ladies. And it's ladies, it's andithought.com. No. And we thought. Oh, and we okay. And we thought dot com. Learn more about them. You can learn more about their programs there as well. They have many more programs to help you uh, become a number one publicist. So just check them out. And um, you heard them. They're they're just they're just a a bundle of joy to have a conversation with. Very very lovely ladies. And I'm Connie Five, and I'm a recovering C-suite CEO, and we will continue to move ideas forward in keeping that passion of life activated. And if you haven't checked it out yet, you want to, Talent Con Sierra, uh, we, uh, we represent the world's most greatest minds who are also keeping that passion of life activated. We work with them and you to turn your success into a successful lifestyle business and that could be through writing through your speaking through acting whatever it is that you want to do but take the success that you already have and create and build that lifestyle business for yourself so i'm going to leave you with this today a book is a dream that you hold in your hands i'm connie fife your unstoppable diva and until next time keep your ideas moving forward and because we are all unstoppable together Bye bye Hey y'all, it's Connie Fife.
Thank you for listening to the Cotty Five Show. Check back often. You don't want to miss any of the good stuff. If you like what you hear and would like to be a guest on the show, head over to thecottyfifeshow.com to apply. While you're there, check out our amazing advertising opportunities that will put you right in front of your perfect client. I will see you over there. Do yourself a favor this week. Activate your power and be unstoppable together. 